Want to know what the best products at the drugstore are? Let's go. Hey there guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going over my current drugstore favorite products. Yes, we may or may not have just done the best of 2023 very recently, but in that video, I went over products that were high-end as well as drugstore. This video is fully dedicated to all the awesome products that are at the drugstore. Now, I may or may not have recorded this video once already, sat down to edit it, and realized that I recorded the entire set of clips in slow motion. And you know what that means. That means there was no audio. So here we are refilming it. In case you're brand new here, hi, my name's Courtney, and on this channel, we talk all things wavy curly hair, wavy curly hair science, and basically just tips and tricks on how to get your hair the healthiest it has ever been. These are the products from the drugstore that absolutely help me do that. So without further ado, I'm gonna stop rambling and let's get into it. First category is clarifying shampoos. As wavy curly girls, we can tend to use products that may or may not build up on the hair in an effort to thoroughly condition our hair and style it. Those stylers sometimes can weigh down and build up on the hair. And we need a good clarifying shampoo in our arsenal. And you may or may not have heard me talk about this lovely product before, but this is the Pantene Volume Shampoo. And you may be thinking to yourself, <gasps> Courtney, don't you know anything about healthy hair? That product contains sulfates. Yes. Yes, it does. Sulfates are actually one of the most gentle and effective ways to remove certain kinds of buildup. Now, I'm not saying you use this product every single time you wash your hair. No, no, my friends. What I propose is that you use this product sparingly, once, maybe twice a month, maybe more frequently, depending on how prone to buildup you are. And after you've cleansed your hair with this product, then I want you to deep condition your hair with heat. And then not only are you removing all of the buildup, but you're actually getting the most out of your deep conditioner that way. And because I'm Courtney, I'm gonna give you two options for every category. The second clarifying shampoo option that I want to recommend is the Kinky Curly Come Clean Shampoo. Oh my goodness, I just recently tried this and it has already become one of my absolute favorite products of all time. I cannot tell you how scared to try this product I was. I avoided this product like the plague because of all the feedback I had heard from people over the years that this product was the most stripping, the most clarifying, the most powerful shampoo on the planet. Somehow I got it in my head that if I used this product, I was going to have a bale of hay on my head, complete and utter straw. No, that is not the case. While it is an effective clarifying shampoo, I found that it did not leave my fine wavy hair overstripped whatsoever. Now, I do have very low porosity roots, medium to higher porosity, mid lengths to ends, and I tend to be on the oilier, greasier side. I don't tend to have a really dry scalp. I produce a lot of sebum, so I tend to prefer shampoos that are gonna be able to tackle that issue. This shampoo is a beautiful clarifying option that works really, really well. So if you've been scared to try this because you've heard that it's really, really drying, don't be. Use it as your clarifying shampoo and deep condition afterwards. As for deep conditioners, I have two options for you. The first one is the Camilla Rose Algae Renew Deep Conditioning Mask. This is such a neat product. It smells super good, vanilla, sweet, with a hint of peppermint. It has a light yellow texture with like little dots in it, which I am guessing are actually little pieces of vanilla bean, like real vanilla bean. This deep conditioner has incredible slip and it is incredibly nourishing and moisturizing. But if you are somebody who has finer hair, your hair is not on the coarser side, it's on the finer side, meaning that the diameter of your hair is smaller, like each individual hair strand is smaller rather than thicker. I think that this deep conditioner would work better for finer hair types that are very easily weighed down. If you have a slightly coarser hair texture and need just a little bit more 
this is the one that I would reach for. The Shea Moisture Manuka Honey and Yogurt Hydrate and Repair Protein Power Treatment. Now, do not be confused by the marketing. I, I disagree with Shea Moisture calling this a power protein treatment. If you are looking for a powerful protein treatment, I don't think this is it. I think there are other products out there that pack a more powerful protein punch. However, this is one of the best deep conditioners I have ever tried at the drugstore. And it contains a super interesting ingredient. Hydrolyzed vegetable protein, PG propyl cilantriol. I'm not sure I'm saying that right, but basically what that ingredient is, is it is a protein silicone hybrid. And it is an ingredient that is amazing for high porosity hair or coarser hair types. Because of its molecular structure, it can actually bind to and help reseal the hair cuticle. Now, it doesn't act like a regular silicone in which it just kind of continually builds up on itself. It's not one of those kinds of silicones. It's a protein silicone hybrid. So you get the benefits of both the protein and the silicone. This also contains yogurt extract, which I think is where the majority of the powerful protein treatment marketing claims are coming from. So while this may not be the powerful protein treatment that it's marketed to be, if you are looking for a really high quality, moisturizing, nourishing deep conditioner at the drugstore, try this one, especially if you have coarser hair or damaged hair. Next up, regular Curly Girl Wash Day Shampoo and conditioner. You may have seen these before and I'm going to briefly talk about them here, but I'm gonna try and not spend too much time on them because you've seen them in previous videos. But I do wanna talk about them because they are incredible. And in case you haven't seen the previous videos, you need to hear the goodness. This is the Shea Moisture Apple Cider Vinegar Anti-Dander Shampoo with Salicylic Acid. I'm an oily, greasy girl. I've got finer hair and I actually struggle from time to time with folliculitis, which is inflammation of the hair follicle. Basically, it's a scalp zit. I know that's disgusting, I'm so sorry. But this shampoo is perfect for that. If you really struggle with greasy roots and it doesn't seem like anything you do ever gets rid of the grease, try using a shampoo with salicylic acid and bonus points that it contains apple cider vinegar. These ingredients help really dissolve that oil and melt it away. Now, the shampoo may or may not be more stripping than the Kinky Curly Come Clean shampoo. This makes my hair feel like straw, just a little bit. I'm a little bit panicked after using this shampoo, thinking that there's no way I will ever be able to finger detangle my hair ever again. That is where the Shea Moisture 100% Virgin Coconut Oil Daily Hydration Conditioner with Coconut Milk and Acacia Sigrid it all. Blech. Can't pronounce that last ingredient. Why are the names of these products so terribly long? I don't know what magic and sorcery is in this conditioner, but it is the most lightweight conditioner I have ever tried that has incredible hydration and detangling ability. It is. It follows this perfectly. I feel like I have clarified and deep conditioned, but these are just kind of like regular wash day products. These are ones I could use back to back to back to back, whereas I don't necessarily deep condition and clarify every time I wash my hair. I save that for once to twice a month, whereas, you know, I wash my hair two to three times a week, I would use these. I hope that makes sense. I would have never reached for this product if it hadn't been for India Batson, because we kind of have some similarities in our hair. We're not hair twins by any means, but we have similar needs. We need the hydration, but our hair gets weighed down kind of easy. This does have kind of a stronger coconut scent and P.S. Your girl is actually slightly allergic to coconut. That can be an issue for me. However, I'm not reactive to the fragrance in this product and I really enjoy it. If you are needing an incredibly hydrating yet lightweight conditioner at the drugstore, this is the one. Now, this combo right here of shampoo and conditioner, I don't think is for everyone. These fit very specific hair needs, specifically my hair needs, which is that oily scalp and needing of a lightweight conditioner. However, if you have more basic, general hair needs, you need to get clean and you need to condition your hair. Let me turn the label the right way. 
you need to try these products. I have seen people talk about and rave about these products for years and I never picked them up until fairly recently. And when I use them, I see what the hype's about. I was a little bit nervous because this is the Curl Definition Tahitian Garden Flower and Mango Butter Shampoo from Not Your Mother's Naturals. Usually when a product is marketed for curl definition, my brain translates that to mean heavy and hydrating. And while these are hydrating, they are not heavy. This gets your scalp clean. It has a fairly short ingredients label. It's fairly basic. It's not going to do just a whole lot to your hair other than get it nice and clean without over stripping it. And then the conditioner, which is the Not Your Mother's Naturals Curl Definition Tahitian Garden Flower and Mango Butter Conditioner. <gasps> Oh my goodness. This product also has a fairly short ingredients label. There's not just a whole lot going on here, but what it's going to do is the shampoo and the conditioner are going to give you an incredibly beautiful base to style on. If you are just looking for a solid shampoo and conditioner at an affordable price point, these are really worth the hype that everybody has given them. After you've shampooed and conditioned your hair, you're gonna want a leave-in conditioner. And you may be thinking to yourself, Courtney, I've been watching your videos for a while. Thank you, by the way. You've been doing one brand wash days, Courtney, wherein you skip leave-in conditioner. And you're telling me that I need some leave-in conditioner? Yes. I think the majority of people out there with wavy curly hair would benefit greatly from leave-in conditioners, especially, especially if you're in that special phase that's called the transition phase, wherein you're going from having heat styled your hair exclusively to embracing your waves and curls. There's this period of time that's like six months to a year long in every curly girl's life wherein your hair is incredibly persnickety and needs all the tender loving care and it basically throws a hissy fit at the drop of the hat. You know what I'm talking about when we have a bad hair day. It's a bad hair day when your hair is in transition. So these are the leave-in conditioners that I was reaching for on a regular basis that really made a huge difference. The first one I want to talk about is the Curls Blueberry Bliss Leave-In. This leave-in conditioner is so cool. It is incredibly incredibly concentrated. And I think the majority of the people that claim that this is a heavy leave-in conditioner or that they don't like using leave-in conditioners in general because they're too heavy, I think the problem is is that most people try and grab the same amount of leave-in conditioner as they would rinse out conditioner. This is all the leave-in conditioner that I would need from that product for my entire head of hair. And you're thinking, Courtney, does that really do anything? Yes, yes it does. It helps my curls clump together and gives them just the kiss of hydration that they need in order for those curl families to want to stay together instead of busting apart and becoming a stringy, frizzy mess. Another reason that I really like this product is it contains hydrolyzed quinoa and silk amino acid, which are proteins that are fairly mild on the protein spectrum. They're not going to cause a lot of issues or reactions in people's hair while also helping reconstruct hair and give you the benefits of some protein. And I think that makes this product perfect for finer hair types. If you have coarser hair, Try this one instead. This is the Kinky Curly Not Today, K-N-O-T, Not, how cute is that? This is the first leave-in conditioner I used on my wavy curly hair journey, wherein I like applied it to my hair and my curls like clumped together in these beautiful seaweedy, ribbony type curls. And I finally understood what people were talking about when they said seaweed hair. This is the product that did it for me when my hair was in transition. This product is protein and glycerin free. And again, I don't know what sorcery is in this. I don't really understand the ingredients label. It looks nothing like a traditional leave-in conditioner, but it somehow really, really hydrates the hair with 
without weighing it down. Again, you would only need the tiniest amount if you have finer hair. If your hair's on the coarser side, you can go ahead and grab slightly more of this. But if you have really tangle prone hair or really dry hair, this leave-in conditioner really packs a powerful moisture punch. I'm also gonna throw out the recommendation that if you have littles in your house that have incredibly tangle prone hair, this is one of the products that I would use to detangle their hair with. It definitely has the most slip of the majority of the products I have ever tried. It's very slippery. Next up, let's talk curl enhancers. What do I mean by a curl enhancer? I mean a custard, a souffle, a product that has more hydration and less hold. These are products that I use after leave-in conditioner to help my curls clump together, but that may or may not have enough hold on their own to use as my single styler or my gel. When I use a curl enhancer underneath a hard hold gel, that's when I get some of my best ever wash days. The first one I wanna talk about is the Kinky Curly Curling Custard. This is definitely one of those products that I have had and played around with for over the past five years. I like it for coarser hair types that need more moisture, but if you have finer hair, try this as your curl enhancer. It is the Camilla Rose Curl Maker. It has a really neat fragrance. It's super lemony and gingery, and it has just slightly more hold than the Kinky Curly Curling Custard. And it's just a tad bit less moisturizing, but you still get all of those really good curl enhancing benefits that help your curls clump together. And it gives them a little bit of structure and shape to kind of hold things in place before you go in with your hard hold gel. These are the three hard hold gels that I would recommend from the drugstore. For you by Tia, Curl Defining Gel is the option that I would recommend for coarser, drier hair types. It has a really neat, seaweedy type texture. It gives medium to hard hold, but the hydration and shine level that this product gives really reminds me of the EcoSlay Orange Marmalade. If you've ever tried that product and have wanted a drugstore dupe, this checks all the boxes for me of that product. It's not an exact formulation dupe. It's just very, very similar in how it performs. I find that it's incredibly difficult to formulate a super hard hold gel that's also incredibly hydrating but this did it. If you have more medium textured hair, it's not crazy fine, it's not crazy coarse, try Aussie Instant Freeze. Now, there is an interesting story with this product. Five years ago, there was a formulation of Aussie Instant Freeze that had polyquaternium four up near the top of the ingredients label and aloe leaf juice or aloe gel towards the bottom. Well, they reformulated the product and all of a sudden polyquaternium four was at the bottom and the aloe was near the top of the ingredients label. And people were not too happy about that because some people felt that their hair was reacting to the aloe in the formula. I did actually notice a change in the formula. Like I could feel a difference in how the two different formulations performed in my hair. I liked both, but they were just kind of different. Now it appears that Aussie has reformulated the product back to the old formulation that they had five years ago. I don't know that for a fact. I don't know that for certain. I don't have the old bottle to compare this one to, but it reminds me of that because once again, polyquaternium four is way up on the ingredients label. But as I'm reading this, I don't even see any aloe in here. So maybe it's not exactly like it was the original formula that I tried. But that being said, it reminds me a lot of the original formula that I tried. And I love the performance of this product. That polyquaternium four, that I keep rambling on about is a great humidity blocking ingredient. And this is a great gel to really help lock in style and help create a cast to keep your wash day lasting longer. If you have finer hair that is incredibly easily weighed down, try the Not Your Mother's Frizz Control Curl Talk Sculpting Gel. I absolutely agree with their assessment that this is a hold level three out of five. It's definitely a solid medium hold gel medium to 
medium light hold is what I would call it. But the reason that this is so lovely for fine hair is that it contains rice extract, keratin amino acids, radish root ferment filtrate, and a lactobacillus tomato ferment extract. These ingredients are incredible for fine hair. They help lend structure and hold to the hair without making the product heavy or weighing your hair down. This does contain a decent amount of glycerin and there are instances wherein using glycerin in a product that remains on the hair can cause it to react with humidity to some extent, but that's not always the case. I would not not try this product because of the glycerin. I would go ahead and try it and see if your hair likes it or not, especially for the price. Now let's talk mousses. A lot of people like to put mousses underneath their hard hold gel, but I personally find that when I do that, it's almost like I'm binding the mousse down. Mousses are meant to add volume and bounce to the hair and movement to the hair. And when you lock them down with a gel, I have felt like it has defeated the purpose of the styler and only let my hair feel slightly producty because of the amount of product I've put in my hair. But when I put them on top, of a gel, which is why I'm talking about the products in this particular order. I prefer mousse after gel. I find that I get all the benefits of the mousse and the gel and the curl enhancer and the leave-in conditioner if I do it in this order. The first one I wanna talk about is the Not Your Mother's Curl Top Activating Mousse. They claim it's a two out of five hold. I disagree with that. This is a hard hold product for me. I can use this on its own as a single styler and get a cast. This works better for coarser hair types as it's more nourishing and hydrating. I do find that it can be a little tricky to work with that if I get just slightly too much, my hair is gonna have this weird lotion gritty feeling on it. It's, it's somewhere in between lotion and gritty. Like don't ask me how those two words make sense side by side, but if you've used too much mousse on your hair, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's the strangest feeling on the hair. For that reason, I tend to reach for the Marc Anthony Strictly Curls Curl Enhancing Styling Foam with Extra Hold. I don't consider this a foam because it's a mousse. Mousses are the ones that like grow and grow and grow in your hand after you press the applicator but you'll notice that I was actually able to dispense like a reasonable amount of product. I didn't just barely touch the button and get a softball sized amount of product. I got a workable amount of product, which is something I appreciate about this one. I like this for finer hair types because it contains the silk amino acids. It's not quite as heavy, but you get lots of hold out of it. Also, this product is one of those that's incredibly slippery, which is odd to say about a mousse. I have used this as a leave-in conditioner before when I was testing out a viral Instagram hack. And while I didn't feel like it added volume to my hair, it definitely added hold and hydration. So that was kind of fun, but I prefer applying it after gel, kind of targeting my roots a bit and I get really good volume. It has a fresh, sweet lemon fragrance. It's like lemon cake, which is one of my favorite desserts. If you haven't tried this mousse yet and you have finer hair and you've been struggling to find and make mousse work for you, here you go. This one is really good. <laughs> I wanna give an honorable mention to the Pacifica Big Waves Soft Hold Volume Hairspray for long lasting surfy hair vibes. This is an incredible product, especially if you struggle with silky roots and lack of volume. It's kind of somewhere in between a hairspray and a sea salt spray. It does contain a drying alcohol and that usually is an ingredient that I like to avoid because it's drying, however, it's gonna evaporate before it hits your hair because it is used as the propent or the propellant for the product getting out of the bottle. I get way more nervous when drying alcohol is in my hair gel rather than in an aerosol product that's gonna like evaporate before it hits my hair. This is a product that would be perfect to use after you've applied all of your stylers, you've plopped your hair, you're about to diffuse, pause for a second, Target applies some of this in the areas that you struggle to maintain volume, then go ahead and diffuse and it will add body and lock in the volume in that targeted area forever, <laughs> for a very long time. And it's 
smells really good too. Like really good. I love vanilla fragrance apparently. Another honorable mention for Pacifica is their Scalp Love Roseberry Mint Serum to purify and revive. I've already mentioned it in this video, but I do have scalp issues and it does get really inflamed. And when that happens, sometimes I just need to reach for something to help calm it down. And this serum is one of those things that I love to reach for. I'm trying to show you that it's a super runny water-based formula. So if you are really nervous about putting oil on your scalp, like that's just something you can't make yourself do, which I think oil on the scalp can actually be beneficial. But if you're not there yet, this serum dries down completely and is 100% not oily. It contains some really powerful ingredients like panthenol, rosemary leaf extract, vitamin C, aloe leaf juice, hyaluronic acid, meadow sweet flower extract, witch hazel extract, sage extract, and the extracts go on and on and on. Here's what I find when I use this product. I can use this when I maybe have extended my wash day too far and I, my scalp is starting to get really inflamed and irritated and itchy on me, I can throw some of this on my scalp and it calms all of that down, soothes my scalp and really keeps me from running into a major inflammation issue. I tend to be pretty skeptical of most like scalp serums at the drugstore. That's one place that I'm willing to go ahead and invest in the high-end expensive products because I want those ingredients to be effective and powerful. However, this one is one that delivers the powerful, effective ingredients and it's available in the drugstore. So that is really cool. And my last drugstore favorite is the Myel Rosemary Mint Scalp and Hair Strengthening Oil. This is incredible. This really makes a visible difference in my hair every time I use it. It is an actual oil formula, so it won't fully absorb into the skin. It, it comes close, but it's an oil base, so like it doesn't dry down all the way. It stays greasy a bit, but the way that I use this is I apply five to 10 drops on my scalp roughly 30-ish minutes before I'm going to wash and style it. And what it does is it actually helps break up and dissolve the sebum on my scalp because oil dissolves oil, like dissolves like. This is like double cleansing for your hair. You know how we use an oil to cleanse our makeup off of our faces? This oil cleanses that sebum and product buildup on my hair. And I get my hair actually cleaner when I use this as a pre-shampoo treatment on my hair. It also works great on the mid lengths to ends. So if you wanted to, you could use it to scrunch out the crunch with. That's not my personal favorite way to use hair oils. I tend to like to use them on my scalp and finger detangle before washing and styling, but some people use them to scrunch out the crunch with and it, and it helps seal in the moisture and conditioning in your hair. And this would be a great product from the drugstore to do that with. It contains some really neat ingredients like castor seed oil, rosemary leaf oil, jojoba seed oil, peppermint oil, eucalyptus oil, tea tree leaf oil, coconut oil, and the list goes on really powerful and effective ingredients. All right, guys, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And I sure hope you got some benefit from this. You found some products that you think are going to serve you and your healthy hair journey really well at the drugstore. If this video was helpful to you, it would be awesome if you could share it with a friend, comment, like, and maybe even subscribe and click the notification bell so that we can hang out in future videos. This is a free way to support this channel and I really deeply appreciate it. As always, I sure hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and I will see you in the next video.